All right, so um, putting it to vertex form, we'll start by finding the axis of symmetry, which means we have to do negative b over 2a. So that's negative 4 over 2 times 3. Did you complete the square, though? No. You can. I mean, I can check to see. That's an option. I just, I didn't teach it. I taught this way. Did you get um, negative four? Did you get four in the parentheses? All right, I got negative four. Um, Joanna, question about negative four. Um, well, when it comes to graphing, we're actually just going to keep, if I was to factor, I would. But when it comes to graphing, I'm just going to keep the numbers in there. Okay. So I got x equals negative four. I'll put a negative 4 in there. And exponents come first. Ninety six. They both are terrible. All right, so we got our vertex at negative four, negative thirty three. We're going to put this into vertex form. The vertex goes in the H and K spot. And then the A is just, just the same as the A in standard form. So I'm going to keep a 3 in the front. I'll do X minus a negative 4 plus a negative 33. And there's our vertex form. So graphing this um, just presents a little challenge in getting all the way down to negative 33. We can go back down to 30. Okay. So number two is to graph. Yeah, number two says graph. So looking at the vertex, we, we'll, uh, we'll start with the vertex, and then um, perhaps we make a table. I guess I'll do it on my graph paper. I'm 
So I'm going to go um, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, negative 25, negative 30, negative 35, negative 40. Five's on the y-axis, but on the x-axis, I'm going to go by one. That's okay. You can do that. You can, with, um, like, a quadratic function, it really makes the most sense. All right, so I'm at negative 4, negative 33 right here. And then I need to get some other points. So I could just really understand the proportional relationship between these points. Or I can make a table. You know, I'm going to make my table all the way over this whole thing. Wait, can I see the answer to this? Vertex one, or do you want me to? What? Yeah. I meant. Oh, I meant this one. I meant this one. I got it.
So that usually happens when you Pretty much a game changer. Just to review, domain is all real numbers. And range here would be y is greater than or equal to negative 33. Okay, so all of that is fair game for your test Tuesday. What's next? Identify domain and range. Oh. No, that's that's exactly it. So number four um, is just the option symbol. So we do a different person. Yep. So do what you did the first time on number four. If you want to just do a quick guess of it and then change your answer on number four. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I've been requesting questions on this one. That's not a correct one. Right? I changed it down a lot. It's the exact same graph, but you It's a challenge to write. It's really simple. You can throw a bunch of food on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. counting on you to read your book and figure it out, I should help you with it. So take a minute, read the problem. Can you guys please stop? So, you guys know when you increase prices that you have a chance of selling less. So, he thinks um, every time he increases the price by a dollar, he's going to sell five less. Right, right. He's waiting there. Right. Right. And we're going to figure out what price we should sell the t-shirt that to maximize his profit. It's a nice accounting problem. This is going to be on your test. You might want to wait. She's getting the last one on the For sure. She's one. I think. 
Yeah, I mean, I can't stop you. Okay. So we're going to say his profit. Actually, I would prefer revenue. Yeah, this is the last one. You can call it classwork. You call it classwork if you want. Let's call this one classwork. Okay. Your revenue for your teacher currently is 10. Well, we'll go with 100 t shirts sold at $10 each. That's how much money your business is going to make. 100 times 10. So his prediction I'm going to write his data in front of me. Um, X is going to be Number of one dollar increases. So he thinks his shirts are going to go down five every time he increases it by a dollar. So they're going to reduce by five for every increase. And his prices would be going up by one dollar. So you could say one X or X. Any questions so far? Okay, so let's just rewrite this in standard form. 100 minus 5X times 10 plus X, foil it. Go ahead and foil it and put it in standard form. And here's the function that models his revenue in standard form. And that's so. I did 100 minus 50. Combined in like terms. Well, well, let's talk about what he's asking for. It's the best thing to have a visual. All right, X is. Um, one dollar increases. And then why here is his revenue? His or her, I guess Sal could be it as well. Okay. So is this parabola opening up or down? So opening down because the negative in front. And its y intercept is up at one thousand. So you can picture this going like this. Okay. This top point, the vertex of this parabola, represents maximum revenue. Yes. So this is an actual real world application of quadratics. It's used in marketing and in business. They will graph their money versus their profit and then they will decide where they're going to max out and that's how they reach price points okay so go ahead find the vertex find the vertex of this quadratic how do we find vertex Thank you. 
Should he, um, should he sell his, $15. So they're, um, they're starting at $10. Remember X represents the number of $1 increases. So to explain the complete sentence, this sentence might help. Sal should increase his price. by five dollars making the cost 15 because they started at 10. That's the answer. What price will maximize the future income? Fifteen dollars which is how it should be said. So you can read an example about this in Chapter 4-1, they do another one. There's an example over five, but that was about the same thing. Okay, now if you're at your homework, I'm going to stay out to the answers. You can ask questions. I mean, people lose their stuff all the time. You lost like your workbook? Okay. <laughs> you know what? I gave it over the weekend to look for it. I think it was my time and I just gave you another one. <laughs> so next year we're actually gonna be brand new textbook and material, so we can we got some extra. Why am I offline? Hmm. Oh, there it is. It's the number in front. It's going to go down like this when the arrow is pointing.
anybody have any questions? Okay. <laughs> okay, um, so you guys have a review to start. It's due Tuesday before the test. Three factors. <laughs> All right, to write the quadratic equation, you have to think backwards. So when you're solving a quadratic, you're usually looking at factors set equal to zero. So we have like an X here and an X here. Like this would be the factored form. And these factors solved give you those solutions. So thinking backwards, I would do x plus 4 and x minus 2. Because if I were to make little mini equations, the results would be negative 4 and positive 2. Yeah, that's it for 22 and 23. Oh. All right, just say standard form. We better foil it. It's a little bit more complicated with a fraction. I don't know if I'm just about to see um, what the factor looks like. I really like this term. Four times negative two. All right, I'm going to give you um, full credit for either one of these answers. We do x plus 2 thirds and x minus 1. But I think some of y'all are um, with this enough to know that a fraction answer came from a, a coefficient on x. So this is a little more advanced than this one. They're equivalent. Yeah.
All right, I'm going to go into number 26 backwards. Hey, if your conversation's off task, it should not be happening. <laughs> so in the factoring method of solving, that's when you really want to come out of your two walks for a job for us. You guys were talking about a greatest common factor just now in vertex form. Factoring is a really great idea to always Always look for a good deal. And then you're going to say, you know, what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to negative 8? If it was out, I saw it. Was it out? And I saw it. Let me look at my book. Um, like number 27, you're going to do the 8 times 3 backwards. Let's check it out. This part, you have to rewrite the middle in fractions like version over this. In 26, after you take the GCF out, there is no leading coefficient. That's the difference. You guys, you guys are distracting. Just be quiet. Shh. Kaylee, do you want to move to the back of the room? I can turn the desk around. That might help. Just put you right in the corner. <laughs> All right, what multiplies to negative six and adds to negative five? Actually, this time I think it's going to be negative 6 and positive 1. But 2 and 3, right? Max, you're doing it now. You have to disrupt the class 15 times before you're sent to timeout. Okay, so do you remember this, Jackson? Where you rewrite the middle two? And then you do grouping. You look at each group of two. Oh, positive one. Okay, put a positive one in there. Remember taking it out of each group of two? It's fine. You don't have to have perfect graphics. No, you don't even have to put brackets on. Oh, we are only talking about the fancy bracket. This is definitely on the test. 
What's your question? This was the beginning of chapter four, which was just the beginning of quarter two, so within the last four weeks. So yeah, we started this in quarter two, like like the first week of quarter two. So it's a four week test. It's good. Uh, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. It's between like twelve and sixteen. These both divide by two, right? So I put a two right here, and then one here, and then they go together here. Yeah. Kaylee, it's gonna be all right. Um, no, it says to solve, so that only go to zero. Solve them. <clears throat> so every fraction that um, has like a irrational denominator, like anything that divides by seven, for instance, like three over seven, that decimal doesn't, you can't write it without rounding it. So when you move fractions to decimals, you, um, you sacrifice a portion of that number. So in real science and math, fractions are more exact than decimals because they, they've never been rounded. So that's why once we get to this level of math, we work with fractions and not decimals. We don't want to, we don't want to mess up our measurements because we're forced to round a number. So that's two types of factoring right there. Factoring from A equals one, well DCS. A equals one and then the A times B method. So if you want to, one of the things that's effective about your workbooks is that you can go through all of chapter four problems that you have done and study those. So if you need to go back to the part called factoring and look it over, you could, or look through your paper. You guys have a lot of work in your notebooks that you've done. You might not remember, but you should go back and review it. So you know how area is like side times side? Yeah. Well, that's side squared, and that's a that's a quadratic. So the area of a rectangle or square is a quadratic equation. Yeah. 